in 2018 when i gave my tedx talk on the unheard unseen and unknown cyber crimes so th th there were two sets of audience at that point of time when i got down the stage and there was a break so you know there was one man who came you know he just told me one line kya dhap maar raha tha tum upar acha nahi aisa to na ho sakta hai you know so i was giving that time the story about that how deep fakes will evolve and uh, so so there were people who were not just ready to believe it that there can be something like a deep nude a deep fake and ai can become so powerful mm -hmm. and look at the reality just last week in kerala there is this particular retired man he gets a call from his ex colleague he says look i am at the airport and my sister in law has been admitted and she just we need to just deposit 40000 rupees so if you can just transfer me that something st struck him he says do a video call mm. he says sure i'll do a video call he goes on the video call he says hi and balu please yaar aisa aisa zarurat hai help kar de wagera he says all that with the emotions and everything so this man of ours he transfers 40000 this was a complete deep fake hi everyone welcome back to the gb show Cyber Fred seventh anniversary special episode. Last uh, week you have met my team and uh, where we introduced R B. That's Ritesh Bhatia, and uh, she told he is charming, handsome, and one more thing which I will like to add that he is a versatile powerhouse and he is a good friend and mentor to me. And whatever we are doing in Cyber Fred, it's not possible uh, without him. He gave us the ideas to start the community. he is the man behind the logo even all the logos you see even my last series like you know infosec tales we have then the cxo junction cyber fred cult site designing strategy he is the man behind everything and this anniversary special 7th i will like to dedicate to him and that is why this episode i have ritesh with me and we will going to talk about the new age cyber extortion with him so let's hear him out hi rb welcome to the gb show my show your show the great bhatia oh my or, god or or i should say the german beer the gb show cheers Yes. you know this is this is a great thing yes and you are looking very handsome and uh, so competition ke liye maine bhi blazer pehna hai fatafat ha <laughs> who can beat you <laughs> so 7 so years yes it's 7 years i i think i should be interviewing you how does it feel it's feel awesome it's feel like uh, dreams coming true and uh, i think the all the hard work which we have done together you know we can show it and uh, lot of things you know i i can't express so so you know that in the marriage there is a 7 year itch and you then tend to go out so are we planning to go international now since 7 years is there is there an itch now to expand and now go international okay so uh, ritesh just uh, as you are saying we are going international uh, the very first international uh, cxo junction event is happening on 13th of september oh and i am invited by default by default by default great, i hope great. the saudis gives you the visa <laughs> oh, oh i'll manage them <laughs> i'll, I'll manage enough. them <laughs> fair enough so uh, ritesh as we said so you know whenever i am i had previously talked to you we always uh, came out with an uh, to the uh, you know emerging threats or the conversation which is you know up to the date right so and uh, the audience which i have they are always uh, yeah. looking forward to hear out uh, to you and i was just waiting for the 7th anniversary to introduce you with this new wall and new studio new studio and you are the uh, first one to inaugurate it this is what i wanted so happening and uh, you have given me an amazing topic to discuss on as well so new age cyber extortion right new age cyber extortion yeah so so what is what was old and what is new in this well if we talk about extortion now uh, i will restrict myself completely to the corporate world mm -hmm. that we are talking about the extortions that were happening and you know typically extortion cyber extortion comes under two categories if you see the ddos and the ransomware yeah. but the focus has been a lot on the ddos uh, or on the ransomware as such so at that point of time what you would do you know when even you were in working in so many banks and uh, other companies 
uh, you would be extorted because there was a ransomware and you would just like take the backup and say okay you are done okay then came the new era the uh, the ransomware 2.0 i would say mm -hmm. wherein now they would just also take your data and now they put it on the uh, dark web you know talking about the leaks and all and you know every day like whenever i mean it's a ritual kind of me whenever i start my laptop i first go onto the dark web mm -hmm. there are certain websites which show okay what all new data leaks have come so i'm able to see them there are so many indian companies also and the data is out over there the samples are there so that's the 2.0 wherein the i i can also see the timer over there mm -hmm. that this much time has been given to a company so we can actually make it out okay this company is there now whether they are aware or not most likely they are aware they just show they aren't aware and i then tend to call them up look this is happening and what what are you planning to do about it so so here is just me who is knowing it and because i am a part of the com community and because i also come on the media often i don't want to go and open my mouth over there so one thing the community needs assurance from me i mean be assured from me that i'll never ever go out into the media just for some lime like you okay my you know there is a friend of mine and his company is breached and all no i would rather prefer to talk to him and tell him if you need any so we are in safe hands absolutely the, the entire community is in safe hands now the three is the the latest uh, model which is there of the uh, ransomware 3.0 i would call it so we encrypt the data i mean we as in the hackers they encrypt the data they take the data they communicate with the company now many times and i have seen with my own clients who are coming to me they say that they don't bother don't bother forget it we have the backup it leaked it's leaked mm -hmm. now that's pretty surprising i i somehow feel this trend needs to change okay. okay they they really don't give that kind of importance so and then you know these are the same people who come on the stages and everywhere and they talk about privacy and other things so this double standard needs to come down i i feel so here what is happening is these people have contacted the cyber teams of the respective companies there is no response as such uh so now they start going to the customers they start going to the investors mm -hmm. so let's say i am a particular company it's a, a a large manufacturing company and uh Uh, or maybe even i am a startup as such they have hacked my data they have encrypted it they have asked me for ransom i am not responding to them they are now leaking it online but it's again on the dark web somewhere they make a little noise on the surface web still no response what they will do is now they will start calling the investors they'll start messaging the investors they'll start telling the customers that listen your data is out mm. you should contact the company and tell them that this is what is happening so first the pressure on the company was only and only from the team as such okay. sir data is out let's bring it down mm -hmm. now the pressure is going to come from the outside okay. so there is a lot that's happening and we are seeing that in fact uh, in one of the company where the data was breached my data was over there and i was contacted by the hackers to say that look your data is over there would you like to pay up for your data itself <laughs> alternatively please inform that company he also knows that i won't pay for my data as such so he says okay why don't you inform that company that it has been breached mm -hmm. so yeah so so this is happening a lot of and a lot many more things which we'll talk to in the show i think that that's changed the stance because you know when we were talking about ransomware earlier mm -hmm. it's like you are no one was worried okay so if the ransomware comes in what we will do is we have the backup and everyone was you know giving the advice so what is the advice for ransomware it's take a backup mm -hmm. but what you are talking about 3.0 backup yeah. doesn't work right so it doesn't work even if you you know wipe your systems and take the from the backup then still they have the data and they are reaching out to investors and uh, uh, you know the boards or all stakeholders so in that case is the ransomware negotiation is the only option we have Yes so now when you're talking about you know you just mentioned the word of wiping out the systems and the backup and all uh in the 3.0 that I'm referring to in fact they are not even encrypting the systems in some cases they are breaching i mean they are they are you know uh, exfiltrating the data from the systems onto their servers okay and they are saying that look we have been kind to you we are not encrypting so you can continue with your business mm. but your data is there with me 
so it's happened with um, a few companies i know obviously i will never name them um, my wife will also not know about it <laughs> although she is a part of the ransomware negotiations uh, in some cases so there have been instances where uh, you know these clients have approached and we've come to know about it that okay nothing is encrypted there is you know is just that okay they have taken the data and then they are like you know now threatening them going to the investors uh, so having said that i'm going to answer you about the negotiations part of it yes at this point of time what is the attitude of the management uh, means a lot mm -hmm. and uh, one thing i would want to say is it's not necessary that you have to pay I remember being trolled for when I said, "Okay, you don't have to pay," and uh, but then I had my own reasons for it as to why you really don't have to pay, and you can still sometimes get away with it. But, so let me give you some case studies. So there was this uh, one company, you know, it's an emerging company as such, and uh, systems are not infected, nothing. They get this particular mail that look so and so things are there. This is the data. He gives the sample. Company verifies the sample. Yes, they found the vulnerability. Everything. Now you negotiate with them. You know, so they ask me to negotiate as such. So I have a team like you know my wife Nirali. She's a cyber psychologist, yeah. so she understands the profiling and everything. So when we both sat uh, chatting with the hacker, she clearly said, "Ritesh, this is not the guy. I mean, he's just fooling. He may be having the data, but he doesn't has that kind of courage. Let's let's not pay." So. I also then started chatting with him on you know I started uh, I was given the power to negotiate up to 50% also okay so if the demand is let's say of $20000 I can negotiate till $10000 you know and do it and uh, management was very keen do it do it pay him pay them the $10000 so we were very clear we told the management no we are not paying okay. you know it doesn't he doesn't look like to be somebody who can be a threat later on we found he's actually a researcher mm -hmm. from some other country but he was showing that he's from israel so you know there's a lot of fake things that also happen but yes he did had the data it's not that he yeah. didn't have the data and uh, the company had patched up everything and all that and we were all he was just threatening us that we are going to leak it i'm going to leak it i am going to leak it and that's what when nadali said like you know if these people are going to be organized gangs why is he using the word i and not we Mm -hmm. So there were so many things that came up. Even I did a background research and everything. Even on the dark web, didn't get something. So it turned out to be a young guy who wanted fame, mm -hmm. and he's been doing uh, things. We went onto the Telegram channel. We joined his particular group, and we found out okay, the last that he did was like you know some two years back, and he's been tom toming about that only. But the management was very clear. Please pay. Why are you paying? And we are saying we are not going to pay. Nothing is going to happen. We are going to take the guarantee. It's been more than a year. Nothing has come out. There is no sign of it. And we saved the management the entire, you know, twenty thousand dollars or so, whatever it was. So this was this was one thing. Um, there was another case wherein, uh, you know, the management says forget it. Try to talk to them, but. Uh, let's see we will take a call later on mm -hmm. now here we were feeling you know here the management should have paid okay we we were feeling then and we were telling them that look uh, because what he did he actually got out the data on the surface web also no. and he started asking for money and now this is a very big organization if the media would have caught attention i mean these guys would have been like really jacked and here we wanted them to act fast but again we were very surprised that they didn't bother because this data had aadhar uh, photographs of people you know the aadhar card images they had they had the passports of certain people driving like i mean in terms of address proof and everything they had a lot that was there so now what about the privacy now what about the they had the and this was like all residential addresses also right so there's so much of a risk i mean to the family and everything because we've also seen that in the cyber crime world how the data breach affects individuals at the end of the day you're not a cxo you know mm -hmm. you're just a father you're a husband you're a son so you really got to understand that there are implications to the family also the company just didn't pay but the luck was so good of this company 
uh, it was that time when the FBI brought this site down and they like, you know, okay, the lucky <laughs> they ones, raided uh, and yeah, they're, they're really lucky <laughs> ones. <laughs> so, okay. but everybody cannot get hmm. lucky as such. Yeah, but I think uh, negotiation is of course one thing and extortion when we are talking. So these organizations, there are, now we see the AI based attacks as well for the extortion and which is not only to the corporates, but they are specifically sometimes target the employees with the high designations yes. as well, right? Yes. So yes. why don't you tell us more about that? Okay. Uh, in 2018, when I gave my TEDx talk on the unheard, unseen and unknown cyber crimes. So th th there were two sets of audience at that point of time when I got down the stage and there was a break. So, you know, there was one man who came, you know, he just told me one line. Kya dhap tha tum upar? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was giving that time the story about, uh, I mean, uh, that how deep fakes will evolve. And uh, so, so there were people who were not just ready to believe it, that there can be something like a deep nude, a deep fake and AI can become so powerful. Mm -hmm. And look at the reality. There is a reality over here just last week. And this also, I'm not quoting anything about outside India. You know, generally we say, oh, this is, this is like, like a one-off mm -hmm. case. It never happens. Just last week in Kerala, there is this particular retired man. He gets a call from his ex-employee, uh, ex-colleague. Now, that's a public sector unit. They both were working in a PSU. So he goes, uh, he says, do you remember me? He says, yeah, I remember you. He says, what great fun we used to have and this and that. And they're talking. Imagine you're talking so much. Okay, they are talking, they're talking about their experiences and everything and uh, he cuts the call and again he calls back after some time. He says, look, I'm at the airport and my sister-in-law has been admitted and she just, we need to just deposit 40,000 rupees. So if you can just transfer me that and he's just spoken to him. Okay, he says, obviously you've been talking so much about it, about your experiences and everything. You you know him now. Something st struck him. He says, do a video call. Hmm. He says, sure, I'll do a video call. He goes on the video call. He says, hi, and Balu, please, help kar He says all that with the emotions and everything. So this man of ours, he transfers 40,000. This was hmm. a complete deep fake. Oh my God. The voice. Forget the voice. The video. Yeah. Oh. So, so. Can you imagine the implications that we are going to see? And that's why I say 2024 is going to be the year of deep fakes. If, if these two, you know, from the last five years, see, there's always a trend of something, okay? So the last five years has been a trend of extortion, whether with individuals or whether with the companies. 2024 will be the new age extortions, the new age scams uh, with with the AI. And, and what kind of cases have happened? So this is a case from India, from our own very, like God's own yeah. country, this has happened. So how can you now say that this is not going to happen? Imagine like grandparents getting a video call saying that, look, you know, your child is over here, your child is crying, everything. What will the grandparent do? Yeah. He will transfer the money. So this we call as a grandparent scams. So which used to be there earlier, but that used to be just a message and everything. And now it will be a video of the grandchild crying and it's actually the grandchild, but it's the deep fake version of it. Oh my God. So uh, Ritesh, I think whenever I talk to you, you know, I get to learn something new, what is happening in this space and uh, amazing insights. And I always love to talk. So I have a one well, last segment. Uh, this is specifically for my audience, right? Where I want you to talk to them directly. Okay. So you need to tell them maybe, you know, how they can safeguard themselves from these kind of extortion. And also the, for corporates, if they are in the negotiation game mm -hmm. of ransomware, what they need to do. Okay. So basically, uh, I'll, I'll break down this into two parts. One is the AI based thing. Uh, you know, we always say practice three things. Uh, so they, these are the three apps that you should download, but then uh, download in your head. Number one is practice the pause. Practice the pause means just because imagine an AI based boss of yours calling you up and saying transfer this, which actually happened now uh, in Hong Kong. Okay, in Hong Kong, it happened uh, with the Japanese bank where the Japanese bank's parent company's boss, the MD, 
he calls up and says please transfer 35 million dollars and this guy does that because it was a it was a voice call actually and he trusted it he'd, he'd also seen the mails from that of course those were the phishing kind of emails those were spoofed and everything they did it so that that's the reason we say firstly practice the pause just because it's a boss calling asking for some data or you know transferring the money hold on the moment you practice the pause switch on to the second app which is zero trust Say I don't trust anything as far as the cyber world is concerned. I just gave you the example of what happened between two friends, how the deep fake thing was there. Moment you have a zero trust, you will automatically go to the third app in your brain. And what is that? That's verify. You will verify it whether it's really my boss or not. Just by a video call, you just cannot do it. There have already been three cases. Just go and Google deep fake audio cases in the corporate world. You will see three such cases that have happened. It's just three is soon going to become 300 you know it's just a matter of months is going to become 300 so verification will be most important coming to ransomware you know we all say we are prepared i don't think so because when the negotiations have to be done where's the crypto do you have enough bitcoins to transfer to them you may be having an approval from the management but the moment you go to buy crypto they will ask you for a whole lot of like uh, you know documentation and there's a certain limit that you, you can buy and that's the reason please be re uh, ready with cryptos like you know uh, you, you could have somebody in dubai uh, some companies or your partner companies or somebody holding such kind of things when you're negotiating with the hackers make sure you don't lose your cool because at a drop of a hat they block you you have to understand that you need to keep their egos as high as it is do the ego massaging you cannot lose it Inform your cyber insurance company, inform your legal team, inform everybody. But the best is call professionals to negotiate. Awesome. I hope guys you loved this particular session and the insights you have got from Ritesh. Uh, I love them always. So thank you uh, Ritesh and uh, thanks for uh, being on the GB show. Here is the ritual uh, uh, which I always do. So here is uh, oh, the goodie. <laughs> goodie bag. Thank you for <laughs> joining. It's like the coffee the, with current thing is the beer with GB yes, and the same. bag. Thank exactly. you so much. Thank, Thank you, Ritesh. So nice much. talking to you. Same here. So guys, I will see you in the next episode. Till then, be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.